team in the land has won 15 straight games. It's number one Oregon against number 21 Arizona in a Pac-10 battle. We have had rain on and off most of the day. Right now, showers 46 degrees. It'll work its way under 40 by about halftime, and we expect the showers to continue as well. Take a look at the Pac-10 standings. Oregon, the number one team in the country, obviously number one in their conference as well. Arizona, 7-3, and three, looking for another eight-win season under Mike Stoops. Jeff Kelly, just his second season, and right now he's got his team close to a BCS berth. A win tonight would put him there, and of course, the national championship is still a possibility if they win this one and then win the Civil War next week. Mike Stoops, seventh season as Arizona's head coach. As I mentioned, Back-to-back -back eight-win seasons. They can get an eighth win if they pull this one off tonight. Brad Nessler with Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe. Arizona won the toss and deferred. So we'll see the high-powered offense of Oregon to start the ball game. And Todd, last week, they had their lowest scoring game of the season, two weeks ago, I should say. Yeah, Cal did a lot of good things against them. Primarily tackled well in space. But uh, at home, this offense has been extra explosive. John Bonanno will kick off Josh Huff. And Kenyon Barner are back deep for the Ducks. And we're underway. Kick goes to the six to Huff, the freshman. Broke one tackle, but can't reach the 20-yard line. So coming out, Darren Thomas has had a sensational season so far, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. I think he'll be ready to kind of redeem himself. He, he didn't have a very good game last week, or their last time out against Cal. Cal played almost all man coverage, and he missed some throws that he'd been making the rest of the season. I mean, he has had a, a marvelous season, a third-year sophomore, first-time starter. And with him in the backfield, the leading rusher in the country, LaMichael James. Thomas comes up throwing on first down. Fires, tips, and almost intercepted by Shaquille Richardson. And of course, Oregon plays at a very high tempo, a no-huddle offense. They try to substitute as little as possible so that they can play even faster. Arizona very aware of how they have to play on defense. Some tight ends in this situation on a second down and four. Now Thomas up and down the line to let everybody know the upcoming play. He'll give it off to Michael James on the corner and got the corner. Now looking for a block to take it all the way. Whoa, just going to run head on to Richardson. And he comes up, wings flapping. 38 yards on the run. Well, you can't miss tackles. That's one thing that Mike Stoop says we can't do. And right away, there's a missed tackle, an unblocked defender. The corner, Robert Golden, missed the tackle. And LaMichael James turned it into a big play. Down to the 27-yard line where it's first down. Thomas rolling left. And the man in his face just lets it fly out of bounds and almost to the stands. Brooks Reed was applying the pressure. And the strength of this Arizona defense are their defensive ends. Brooks Reed, who is putting pressure there, and Ricky Elmore, who leads the Pac-10 in sacks. And then the third defensive end, DeAndre Reed, who comes in in pass situations, number 83, also a very effective pass rusher. So second down and 10 at the 27. James only got a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Joseph Perkins from the secondary made the hit. And it'll bring up third down and long. The reason that I thought this would be the best defensive team that Oregon has faced is because they are built, Arizona's defense is built to play this offense better than the two they just lost to in their last two games. USC and Stanford, more of downhill power running team. This is more of an east-west spread you out kind of team. Oregon 47% on the third down conversions this year. Thomas back to throw. His pocket gives him time. It's intercepted. Hall goes the other way. And only the seventh interception of Darren Thomas this year. And there's that defense that Todd was talking about. Well, Thomas had time to throw, but I think he kind of stared his receiver down. Once he got into the middle, he stared it down, and the safety was able to get a great break on the football. Tim Hall got a nice break on the ball, tipped it to himself, and made the interception. So Arizona goes to work offensively for the first time at the 40-yard line. Antolin on the handoff, and he gets drilled by the 
Ducks defense and a loss of a yard. Brandon Bear was the first guy there and he had help from his friends. Nick Foles at the controls for Arizona. 71% completion on the year. Second down and 11. A lot of quick throws out of this offense. A lot of screens. Hard to get to him because the ball comes out of his hands pretty quick. They keep it on the ground and they get out to the 44 with the old Antolin. And Casey Matthews, the linebacker, made the stop. So third down coming up for Arizona. The guy to watch in this pass offense besides the quarterback Foles is their wide receiver Jerron Kreiner, the top receiver in the Pac-10, number 82. This is him down here in the bottom. Big time player. Number one in the Pac-10 in receiving and yardage of receptions. The throw is caught. And it's David Douglas for a first down and a good catch. Pick up a 15. Arizona, like Oregon, doesn't take a lot of time in a huddle. They get up to the line as well. They like to play tempo from their four wide receiver set. They don't do it as much as Oregon. They don't do it with all their personnel groups. But when they have four receivers in the game, they like to, to hurry it up a little bit. Nick Grigsby's in the lineup for the first time at the tailback spot. Foles, nice play fake. And he goes deep middle, incomplete, intended for Totogo. That'll bring up second down and 10. Tommy Totogo, the fullback, is the guy who's trying to find down the middle of the field. Arizona came in. They only had eight interceptions on the season coming in. The ninth one they got on Oregon's opening drive could turn into points if they can keep this going at the Ducks 30-yard line. Going to toss it out to Antolin. And he's got a lot of guys chasing him, and he's not even going to get the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit by the Ducks defensively, and Josh Cadu, one of the captains, a loss of one on the tackle. Well, you run that play with the hopes of fooling a defense and getting the ball to the perimeter. That didn't fool the Oregon defense. This defense can really run. They're built for speed as well, and they defended that play extremely well. If you're looking for a team to huddle tonight, you're watching the wrong game. Neither team will. <laughs> this isn't your dad's Oldsmobile type offense on either side. Third down and 11. Foles, plenty of time down the middle, and he throws a strike inside the 20 to Terrence Miller, the tight end. That quiets the crowd and moves the sticks. Excellent protection by this offensive line. It was a four man rush. And Foles, who's a tall quarterback at six foot five, was very comfortable staying in the pocket, finding his underneath receiver, and hitting him for the first down. We're at the 14 right now, though. And they'll run it at Grigsby. And he powers for what he can. A pickup of about three. I mean, two and I was the guy leading the way for him, the left guard. Coming up on the 12th play of the drive. We're halfway through the first quarter. This all started with an interception by Arizona of a Darren Thomas pass. And Arizona's not only keeping the high-powered Ducks on the sideline, they're going down the field themselves. They've used five minutes. Rigsby again. Nice second effort. It'll be about two yards shy of the first down. Grigsby is just now helping. I mean, he had an ankle sprain in the UCLA game early. Missed most of that game. Played one play against Stanford. Missed the whole next game against USC. And then the, the extra week really allowed him to get healthy. So that gives them a full complement of three different running backs that we'll see in the game tonight. Antolin comes in. Grigsby goes out. Lobs it. Got it in the corner. And the field judge says touchdown. 
Jerron Crotter, his first catch of the night's good for an eight yard score. As a quarterback, you don't have to be super nimble or super fast, but you have to be able to buy yourself some time and extend a play. Now, the, the key on that one was his left foot or his right foot down when he caught the football because the one foot looked like it touched the line as he was going out of bounds. Zendayas now is set for the point after. And he's got it up and good. A 60-yard drive that took seven minutes and 42 seconds. And lo and behold, number 21, Arizona, early on the top-ranked team in the country. 7-0. Arizona on top of Oregon, 447 remaining in the first quarter. Great drive after the interception. 16 plays, 60 yards, 742 they use. As good as that was, they need to cover every kick because the returners for Oregon are outstanding. This time they just squib it short, and Casey Matthews, the middle linebacker, picked it up and got a nice return. A good starting field position here at the 44-yard line for the Ducks. Play action. Thomas wants a bunch. Wide open man. It'll be an Oregon touchdown to David Paulson, the tight end. It doesn't take him long. Paulson came in short motion and then just disappears behind the back of the Arizona defense. A bust in coverage. The guy who made the interception, Adam Hall, on the first possession, that time got burnt for the touchdown. Bob Beard in for the point after as they spread out their formation and now bring it all back together for the extra point. And it's up and good. And as Todd said, and we've said so many times watching Oregon football this year, doesn't take them long. In 135 in four plays, we have a tie ball game in Eugene. 7-7, seven, seven. Darren Thomas with a touchdown pass to a wide open tight end. Well, you have two defenders for Arizona, and one of them has to take the tight end as he runs this route. Neither one of these guys covers him. They both are influenced by the play fake. They both come rushing up towards the ball, and they leave a guy behind him for an easy touchdown. Can't give easy scores to a team like Oregon. Paulson, his fourth touchdown catch of the year as Beard kicks off to Mike Turner. He's got to hustle up. Oh, somebody's going to take it in front of him, actually, and that was Jenkins. And now he's going the wrong way. Great kick coverage and not a good return. Jenkins should have let Turner have it, I think. From the 15-yard line. Play action. Bowles wants a bunch on first down. Got a man over. Touchdown, Kreiner. He's going to trot in and hand it to the back judge. How about that for a one-play drive? It was a tremendous pass pattern by Kreiner. A double move. He faked an out route and slowed his speed down and then ran right by the corner, and there was no safety help. And that throw, he... Foles got it right out there where he could run under it. And he had to use every stride that he had to get to it. Longest play from scrimmage this year for Arizona. Zendejas for the point after. And it's up and good. <laughs> he talked about quick strike offense. Yeah. We've got it going right now in Oregon. Well, you mentioned Cliff Harris and his ability to intercept passes and score with them. How do you attack an aggressive corner? Double moves. Watch this. Sell it. Pause. Whoops. Oh. And nobody helping behind. You know, a guy like Cliff Harris is going to go for picks. He's going to try to read that route. And it was perfectly executed by Kreiner. And then Foles gave him the football. I said he was going to be a Tommy Hilfiger impact guy. <laughs> I didn't say which way he was going to impact the game. <laughs> Well, you also said Kreiner was an impact player, too, right? Yeah, and he's got a couple already. But now to kick off again. This time they kicked deep instead of the squib job they had last time. It didn't work for him. Josh Huff from about the 11-yard line. And Huff's got an opening. And he's out across the 45. 
at near the 48 yard line. Nice return. First down at the 42. And now the Ducks take their time, look to the sideline. And back up to the ball. James on a sweep. Got cartwheeled, but he got about seven before Shaquille Richardson made the stop. There's Oregon with those placards they use over there to call plays at times. They just put it down when we went to it, but they've got all kinds of signals, pictures, different things on those cards over there. And there's your audible. Second down and three. Straight up the middle. Michael James, not the biggest guy in the world, but he's pretty powerful, deceivingly so. Most of his runs are in between the tackles. Now, he's got the speed to get outside and break big runs, but he's a, a lot tougher than I think people give him credit for running inside. Already has a 38-yard run to his credit tonight, but that one was just straight up the gut to pick up the needed yardage for the first down, and they've got it just inside the Wildcat 32-yard line. James again on the left side, follows his blockers, puts his head down, still on his feet. Great run that time. Showing speed, showing power, show a little bit of guts at the end of it. Well, this is a gut check for this offense. Last week, 29 carries, 91 yards for LaMichael James, only 162 yards rushing for the team. And this is a team that, that coming into the night averages almost 300 yards a game rushing. So uh, they're trying to get that back on track here early in this ball game. Arizona scored, uh, Oregon rather, scored 33 touchdowns in the red zone this year. They're back in it at the 17-yard line trying to tie this game up with 20 seconds remaining first quarter. James again, straight up the middle. And that might be the final play of the quarter. You never know with them. It only takes them about 20 seconds to get a playoff. They might get one more snap here, and they will. And it's LaMichael James. He lost his headgear on that one. But he got it down inside the 10-yard line. That's where the Ducks will have it to start the second quarter, trailing by a touchdown when we come back. Great night if you're a Duck. It's raining. It's about 45 <laughs> degrees. And right now they're driving. The eighth play of their drive coming up that has only taken them about three minutes to get down inside the 10-yard line of Arizona, but a big third down coming up. Now their last scoring drive was more typical of Oregon. Four plays, 60 yards. Didn't take very long. This one a more methodical drive, but they need a conversion here on third and short. Kenyon Barner joins Thomas in the backfield. Paulson, the tight end, on the move. And it will be Barner. And you're not going to get there. Nope. Adam Hall, who had an interception in the first quarter, makes a tackle on that one. So... Maybe a decision time for Chip Kelly here is going to be fourth down in a yard. They brought Paulson in motion to be the lead blocker on that play, but excellent penetration by the defensive front of Arizona knocked Paulson right back into the backfield. Well, they didn't even flinch about going for it here on fourth down. Fourth down, about a yard and a half. Again, Paulson on the move. And again, Barner, and this time he's got it. Same kind of play, just run it to the other side. You still bring Paulson in motion. He's your lead blocker. And Barner just kind of gets in his hip pocket and fights for the first down. Mike Stoops looking up at that scoreboard to watch the replay. Paulson gets a real nice block on Brooks Reed, knocks him to the inside, and Barner cut right outside of him. Now the Ducks have got three tight ends in there with one in motion. Play action. Thomas pulls up. Fires. Touchdown. In the back of the end zone to Jeff Mayer. Second scoring toss of the night now for Thomas. Boy, when he threw this, I thought there's a lot of traffic in there, but he stuck that football in perfectly to Mayo. I mean, perfect lead on the throw in between three Arizona defenders. Cannot do it any better than that. Six-yard scoring toss, the 12th touchdown catch of the year for Mayo. Beard for the point after. Up and good. 
But Jeff Mayo, one of the 23 seniors, playing his final game at Outson Stadium. Waits on number one, crosses the back of the end zone, and he's got it for the touchdown. Three years ago, this guy was a safety. Now he's moving up the career charts. His 24th receiving touchdown. Tied for first in school history. And he continues his single season school record that he's already got. He's got 12 this year alone. Something about a receiver being dependable. As a quarterback, you know he's going to be there and he's going to catch it when you give it to him. You like those guys. Beard's kick. Mike Turner will camp under it at the five yard line. Turner is going to have to fight to get to the 20, and he's not going to get there. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, the last time this Oregon defense was on the field, they gave up a disastrous play after some miscommunication in the secondary. So when they came to the sidelines, it was a healthy but very animated discussion going on. The guys were saying stuff like, hey, I thought you were going to be here. No, you were supposed to be here. They were going back and forth, but in a healthy way, guys, they're trying to get things straightened out, particularly if they're they think they've got it settled down. Holly, I'm glad you brought those galoshes of yours, the multicolored leopard print galoshes, because it's pretty wet down there. We could just tell on that report. At the 19-yard line, Nick Foles going back to work, pump fakes, and that comes back across the middle in a first down throw to his tight end, who he's used quite a bit tonight, Terrence Miller. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if, if Oregon's defense doesn't find some way to disrupt the rhythm and the flow that Nick Foles is in right now, they're going to have a difficult time all night because he looks very comfortable. He's coming to second and third receiver options. He's getting good protection, and he's able to stay right in that pocket and deliver the football, and he's too good to let him do that. Pick up of a couple. Again, not big yards running, but enough to make Oregon play both. Right. And that sets up some play action. And that just opens up other areas of your passing game if you run with some effectiveness. Arizona take all the 16 yard, 16 play drives in the world you'll let them have because they don't want Oregon on the field on offense either. So even though they go without a huddle, they're not hurrying as much as Oregon normally does on their offensive side of the ball. Foles, this time they get a little heat on him. He's still got rid of it, and he might have a pass interference at the end of the play. Nope, no flag. Cliff Harris made the play defensively. Well, a little bit of pressure. Foles had to step up in the pocket. He didn't get a whole lot on this football, and I think this was a pretty good play. Even though the right arm of Harris's was around Cobb's waist, I think he timed his contact with the football pretty well. Straight down the middle, and it's intercepted by John Boyette. His fourth of the year. And that's Bull's first big mistake of the night. Back-to-back -back throws, Foles made poor decisions. This one was high. The play before, he threw it low. This one, he threw it high, and Oregon got the football. Thought about wearing that same helmet tonight. 14-14, <laughs> Oregon leads the Pac-10. That was their 16th interception of the season, and it sets up their offense at the 10-yard line. Thomas on first down, wanting to throw, and the long ball incomplete intended for Josh Huff and you see the wet field Josh went for a slide after trying to get to that ball that interception by Poles by the way the first time in 92 pass attempts back to the first half against Stanford the last time he was intercepted yeah that, that throw got away from him a little bit and sailed on it and, uh, the only good news is the defense gets to play with a big field Darren Thomas shovel pass inside. LaMichael James broke a tackle, but he won't break the second one of Brooks Reed. And that'll bring up fourth down. You might actually see a punter tonight. Well defended. You, know, you, you hope to slip LaMichael James through on this. You let those guys rush up field, but Brook Reed was right on LaMichael James. I mean, he, it was almost like he was in man coverage on LaMichael James anticipating that play Jackson when they get the stop. Give half of the credit to Ricky Elmore. He's the guy that made the first hit. Oh boy. oh boy, out of the back of the end zone as Maldonado was set to punt. Drew Howell 
Sent that one all the way to the end zone. Well, Arizona will still get the football, but they'll also get two points on top of it. Ooh, that one really took off. Now, the wet ball might have something to do with it. They try to get a dry ball out there every time, but on a snap that's basically 13 yards, that one went about 17. You don't ever get mentioned until you have a bad one yeah. when you're the long snapper. By scoring and by hanging right with them. Remember, there have been halves like this. At Tennessee, things yeah. weren't going so well right. for Oregon, and all of a sudden they just blew the doors off the volunteers. So this one's a long ways from over. Beard will kick off on the free kick. You have the option to punt it or kick it. Beard will kick it. Mike Turner is the guy back deep. Nice kick. All the way down to the nine yard line. And good coverage as well. So, not a lot of harm on the free kick. Avery Patterson made the tackle on the special team. Just with 4.36 to go till halftime and a two point lead. They'd love to get some more points out of this before the break. Foles off play action. Deep middle man is there and he's got him. Travis Cobb has got it all the way down inside the 35. Again, play action after the first down. Make that defense play run or pass, and the play action brings the linebackers up and opens up things down the middle behind the linebackers and falls right on target with the football. Actually, they spot it back out at the 36. But again, Arizona, all kinds of time. 31-yard pickup from Foles to Cobb. Lowoko in the backfield with Foles on a first down. Looking to throw. Wanted to throw a screen, and he threw it right to the Oregon player, but he dropped it. Wow. <laughs> oh. Brandon Tett. Well, first of all, it was an unblocked guy coming, Hannah. And Foles kind of panicked and tried to get rid of the football because he knew he had an unblocked guy coming at him, and he almost threw what might have been a pick six. As it turns out, it was just a and incomplete. So they live to play another snap here on second down and 10. Foles, a lot of time here. Comes back to a secondary receiver. Grigsby broke a tackle and another. And he's close to the first down, about a yard shot. I'll tell you what I've been impressed with with Nick Foles tonight is the way that he keeps his feet alive in the pocket and he keeps moving his eyes and his feet to different targets. Watch, he's looking left, looking left. Now he looks middle, it's not there. Comes all the way back to his outlet receiver on the opposite side. That's probably his fourth choice on that play, but that's a quarterback that's active in the pocket with his hands and feet. Todd, that's the seventh different guy's hit two for 231 yards so far in the first half. Third down and a yard. Maybe less than one. And Foles will do it himself. Todd said earlier, when you're 6'5", 245, you put your head down, and he did, and he got the first down. Well, you mentioned Arizona wanting to score here again before halftime. They've got the two-point lead. They need as many points as they can get against this team. And the other thing, with 332 and counting now, they would love to not let Oregon see the football again until they come out of the locker room. That'd so be perfect. They've got a lot going for them right now on this drive. They've been really good on third down. Six of nine, the Wildcats, including that last one. Antolin broke a tackle inside the 10, still going, and he's got another first down. First and goal for the Wildcats. Pick up a 10 and his best run of the night. Junior out of Las Vegas. Little counter play. Took a good shot there and broke that one. And broke the second one, too. Inside the five-yard line for Arizona, first and goal. And we're down to a minute 30. As Todd said, you don't want to give Oregon any time either. So they'd like to just take their time and get this four and a half yards for a touchdown. Grigsby. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Well, again, I think the key is a touchdown. You know, if they get the ball back with some time, but you get a touchdown, that's okay. 
but you don't want to have to settle for a field goal here. So Mike Stoops and his offensive staff, they don't want to be too conservative here. Even though they're letting the clock run down, a field goal only gives you a five-point lead. That's a one-possession game against a team that averages 50 points a game. Upcoming will be their 11th play of the drive. That's taken over four and a half minutes. Grigsby in the backfield. But they got Kreiner down as a motion man to the right. There's the play fake. Foles is going to be sacked yeah. by Pacinger. And if you call timeout and you throw again on third down. Loss of seven. And a whole face full of dirt or that Nike crumble stuff that's on the field in uh, Nick Foles' face. Yeah. Again, you call timeout, which Mike Stoops just did. And Arizona. You, you still think touchdown here. Let's take another look at the last play. This will be a 30-second charge timeout. Basinger beat the tight end. A.J. Simmons coming around the edge and got the sack. You know, you hate to give up a sack there, but because Arizona had a timeout, they could stop the clock again. Will they go back to one of his favorite targets, even though he's had seven different ones? Or will it be somebody new? Kreiner is up to the top of your screen. Three wide outs to the near side. Third down and goal, but the ball is way back now. At the 12-yard line. Foles. Trying to get it to Kreiner. And it's out of bounds, and now they will have to bring out the field goal unit. I don't mean Zendejas will come out to try to put three on there. Just kind of threw a fade, but he threw it way wide, and there was double coverage yeah. over there anyway. Yeah, not a lot of room over there. Good decision by Oregon to double Kreiner, anticipating that's where Foles would want to go with the football. Tell you what, if they get three out of a drive that ends the half after a fumble recovery when it looked like Oregon was going in, they'll take it. Zendejas, the snap was high, but the kick is good. Nice job by Cryer getting the football placed for number 14. He kind of looks over at the Oregon sideline, shaking a finger as if to say, well, all that timeout stuff you did, Coach, didn't do you any good. Should say. At halftime, they go to the locker room on the road with a five-point lead as we check in with Holly. Well, Coach, you told us you guys have not been a team to panic this year, but what concerns you most about these miscues, the snap out of the end zone, the turnovers? Yeah, we got young kids snapping. We'll be okay, and we shouldn't have turned it over down there, but we'll be okay. It's 30, 60 minutes of football, so. How do you plan to use Michael James in the second half? We'll see, uh, no, I don't. I haven't heard anything from him, so we'll find out when we get in the locker room. Okay, and then just how much confidence do you guys have that you've been so good scoring in the second half this year? We all confidence in the world. All right, thanks, thanks Short and sweet for Chip Kelly. He's not worried. Well, they've proven in second halves all year long that they can come back and win. They're going to have to do it again as we pick up the Wendy's halftime report. Reese, Mark, and Lou standing by. Halftime, 19-14, Arizona trying to pull off an upset, but we got a lot of football yet to be played as we're just about set to start the third quarter. There's a look at the coaches trophy presented by Dr. Pepper going to the winner of the Tostitas BCS National Championship game January 10th in Glendale, Arizona. You'll see it on ESPN with the coverage starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Oregon trailing here and kicking off to Arizona to start the third quarter. And Turner will take it at the 12-yard line. Puts on the brakes, comes the other way, and gets across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Well, you can't ask for more on the road than to have a lead over the number one team in the country. The problem is when you have a lead in the number one team in the country, it can vanish like that, you know? <laughs> That's right, and I think part of the reason that Chip Kelly seems so confident with Holly, he knows his team has outscored their opponents 222 to 54 in the second half. They get stronger. They feel like their tempo wears people out. But defensively, they better figure a better way to pressure Nick Foles because he's off to a very strong game. Here's Foles in the shotgun. And the first pass of the third quarter is knocked down again. They tried that one a couple of times, and this one Terrell Turner again gets a hand on it. Take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Fidelity. And we take a look at the Wildcats drives. And look at those two drives, one at the beginning, one at the end, 16 and 13 plays. That keeps Oregon off the field. They got two touchdowns and a field goal, the one interception thrown by Nick Foles. One interception by each quarterback tonight, and two turnovers total for Oregon, including the fumble that ended all the way down with a field goal to end the second quarter. Here's Grigsby trying to fight for yardage, not to the 29. 
Those third downs, Arizona pretty much owned in that first half because of Nick Spoles' ability to find different receivers. He hit seven different receivers in the first half and really spread it around on third down. So the first test out of the locker room for the Oregon defense on this third down play. Three receivers to the right of Foles. And here comes pressure off the corner. Or do they back out of it? They'll bring it. And Foles stands in and fires and incomplete. Cliff Harris makes a play on David Douglas. So that's exactly what Oregon wanted to do to open up the third quarters, come up with a three and out. Remember, one of the best punt returners in college football is back waiting on Dean Cryer's kick. Had a 64-yard touchdown against Powell in their last ball game. Four on the season. Four on the season. Just incredible. <laughs> Sometimes you can play for about 40 years and never get four. And he's got them all in 10 games. Nice kick. But he's going to have a shot at it, it looks like, at the 21-yard line. Made the first man miss. Not the second and third. Oh, yes, he did. Reverses his field, and he loses yardage. Back to the 15. Nice job staying with it by Jonathan McKnight to make the tackle. So now Oregon starting their own 15-yard line again. Thomas fires across the middle and incomplete intended for Drew Davis. See, I didn't like that throw by Darren Thomas because it didn't look like a confident throw. It looked like a quarterback that was trying to kind of guide this one in and aim it instead of just cutting it loose and throwing it. And he ended up throwing it behind his receiver. Again, Darren had a tough game against Cal the last time out. And uh, it, it hasn't been as easy for him the last two weeks as it was the first nine ball games. Now he's going to pitch it out late behind Huff. But Huff got the handle, and Huff's got a lot of speed. Josh Huff, one man to beat. He'll not catch him. Touchdown, Oregon. 85 yards. Check, check, check. That's a touchdown. Quick scores. That one took about 13 seconds. Longest play from scrimmage this year for Oregon. Well, one of the keys for this offense is blocking on the perimeter as Oregon lines up to go for two here. Thomas getting pressured and had to get rid of it and incomplete. So they come up short. One of the real strengths of the Oregon D uh, offense, you know about the speed, you know about the athleticism, but their ability to block on the perimeter. Watch after they make the option pitch. They're going to fake it to James, pitch it to Huff, and then watch the receivers on the outside clear the way for Huff. All he needs is a little bit of a block. Drew Davis got one out there, and Huff uses that speed to take it to distance. All the big plays this year. And that pitch was on his right shoulder. He did a good job just to catch it. And once he caught it, nobody was catching him. They told us he'd be a bigger part of the offense coming in tonight. That was a huge part of the offense. 85 yards. So Oregon back in front. But having failed on the two-point uh, two conversion, up by only one. Beard to kick. Taken at the 10-yard line by Turner. And out across the 25. That's where Arizona will go back to work. Third down and 13. They were huge on third down in the first half, but missed on their first try here in the third quarter. Snap was high. Slip screen. Got it complete to Kreiner. Kreiner trying to get to the first and second ever. He got it. What a great effort. Bounced off Marvin Johnson and got across the first down line. Well, first of all, he showed great burst and speed to take this all the way to the other side of the field. If he just turns it upfield there, he doesn't get the first down. He gets it all the way to the other hash and then uses strength to bully his way for the first. 
First down at the 42 of the Ducks. Blitz coming. Holes got around that. Now he's going to head to the sideline, get a yard, and get out of bounds. Kenny Rowe ran him out. You know, Holly mentioned he's got the banged up knee. He's still kind of hobbling on that. He's not the most nimble looking guy, but he buys time. I mean, he eludes some pressure and he buys time in the pocket and extends plays without being real flashy about it. And he is really gimpy after that last run. Arizona changes up personnel as they did huddle momentarily. Second down and eight. They shift the tight end from right to left. Fake the run that way. And now Foles is directing traffic and going deep down the sidelines. Got a man out there and he hit him in the hands. And Cliff Harris hit David Douglas. Well, you talk about time to throw. I mean, this is a nice job by the Oregon secondary staying with it. And Harris right on the play. Nick Foles had all kind of time to make this throw and this adjustment and Cliff Harris made a, a beautiful play. Foles on this drive though has had a third and 13 and a third and five and he's converted them both one to Kreiner one to Grigsby. Here's another third and eight. Steps up in the pocket throws on the run overshot his intended receiver Miller the tight end. Eddie Pleasant was covering, and it's fourth and eight. So Arizona, well, they moved it out of their own end. They flipped the field at least, and now they can punt and try to pin Oregon down deep in their own territory. Zendejas is going to come in to punt. Place kicking duties, and now we'll try to punt one down and keep it out of number 13's hands. for the far side and it goes out at the one yard line you can't do any any better than that nice job Alex 40 yard kick out at the one yard line number one Oregon right now in a hole with the lead at their own one yard line in the end zone Aaron Thomas throws it in and out of the hands of the intended receiver Brandon Williams well, they scored last time in 19 seconds, Oregon did. Touchdown drives this year of two minutes or less. They have 38. Oklahoma State, Boise State, Auburn, all teams that have great records or undefeated records. And don't forget, Boise State and Nevada follows us as soon as we're done. That will be a ball game, too. Nevada with a great offense and maybe an opportunity to pull yeah. a stunner. Well, very much like Arizona. I mean, the key for Nevada is their quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. I mean, he's a dual threat guy, different than Nick Foles, but I mean, he is the key to Nevada's opportunity to win tonight. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore standing by. They'll bring you that one when we're done here. Third down and eight now. A dangerous spot here for Darren Thomas. You gotta be careful. In his own end zone. Fires the slant. Good throw. Got the first down to Josh Huff. And that one he threw with some zip. He didn't aim that one. Threw that one. Yeah, I'm sure Mike Stoops is livid about that defense, too, because a, a very soft cushion. I mean, Huff had a lot of room to make this catch and then turn up field. Pretty tentative play by Robert Golden, number one, the corner on that play. An easy conversion for Oregon. Robert Golden, that was bronze at best, that defensive play. <laughs> at the 16-yard line, first down. Ducks look a little bit confused in the backfield. They're going to send Michael James out on a wing, and now he comes back the other way and gets the football. And Arizona waiting for him. They're going to drop him for a loss. Justin Washington made the tackle. Holly? Well, guys, one of the reasons we're seeing so much of Josh Huff tonight is because it was an injury to their normal starting wide receiver who had 33 receptions on the season. Lavashier, 2 and a He's been out. He has a left shoulder injury. He's been on the sidelines here. Not sure if he can return the season, but Huff has filled in admirably. 2 and a was a nice big target, and he's a really good downfield blocker. That's what they lose with him. But Huff has got a lot of shake and bake, as we've seen on his touchdown on the last drive that Oregon had regain the lead. Nine minutes remaining in the third. They're up by one. 
Thomas fires complete to Davis. Davis broke one tackle. Picks up six or seven before Jake Fisher can bring it down. Marquis Flowers is going to take that spot. Third down and four here for the Ducks. Marquis Flowers is a true freshman out of Phoenix. Millennium High School in the game right now. Taking their time. Ready at the line at the 22. Thomas off play action. Going deep. And a flag down. We're going to have interference on Anthony Wilcox. Drew Davis, the intended receiver. Pass interference on the defense, number three. 15 yards, previous spot. Automatic first down. Wilcox came into tonight leading the Wildcats and passes defended. Now this one just a little over aggressive right there. And he did a nice job with his left hand getting back to the football, but with his right arm, he was pushing before the ball got there and drew the penalty. Third time that Arizona's defensive penalties have bailed out Oregon and kept drives going. Now the Michael James sweeps the left side. Well, Michael James Pick up of about six. Well, Michael James, who had a season low rushing a week ago. Uh, I keep saying a week ago. They didn't play last week, but November 13th against Cal. 91 yards on 29 carries. Yeah. Tonight's 71. Well, and you take out the had that 38 yard run in their first possession. Yeah. And other than that, Arizona's done a nice job of bottling him up again tonight. Huff's the guy with a big play of 85 yards so far tonight. Here's LaMichael a second time and back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. See, the key to defending him is not letting him get started. Yeah. He's getting penetration into the backfield and making him go a little bit sideways because of his speed and his ability to get upfield quickly and into the second level of your defense if you don't do that. Mike Ale, at 305 pounds, has really done a nice job bottling up the inside from that tackle spot for Arizona. And run out of bounds. Hall takes out Barner before he can get to the first down marker. I'll tell you what, this Hall now, he's had a couple penalties against him, but he brings it. He ain't backing off, is he? He <laughs> brings it. When he hits you, you know you've been hit, and you don't move forward too often. He's 6'4 and 200 and almost 15 pounds. Warner stood up, but he got it on second effort. Vassallo had him wrapped up, but he couldn't hold him. Yeah. That was just great want to by Barner because he, he was stopped. And he just wanted that first down too badly. He stood up. He just kept moving his legs and falling forward and protecting the football. And a hard-earned first down for Kenyon Barner. Second time that Oregon's converted a fourth and a yard. So they keep their drive going. Tenth play, and they've used over four minutes. Still not to midfield yet. So they're doing smaller chunks. This open field stop by Trevin Wade on Michael James, or he might have been off to the races. And again, that's the thing with this offense. Because of the ability of so many guys to break big plays, you have to tackle well in space because missed tackles equal big plays. James cuts up on the inside this time, and he's got another first down. Jake Fisher and Wade combine on the stop, but Michael James has got the gears going a little bit. And Chip Kelly's going, I want it faster, I want it faster, I want it faster, let's go. We've got it down to the 41-yard line, first down. Now Thomas comes up throwing. Completes it, but short game. See, Chip Kelly believes that their tempo and the speed with which they play has a cumulative effect on a defense. That's why their numbers in the fourth quarter are off the charts. They feel like they wear a team down and they get a team make mistakes when they get tired. Pass high, but caught by Paulson. And Hall is saying, hey, he's out of bounds before I hit him. He's not going to get that call. I think he felt like the receiver was bobbling the ball as he was going out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Didn't look like a bobble from us. Also had a touchdown catch earlier. They're going to bring the chains from the far side to take a look at this.
And it's that short. The ball came out, but he was four yards out of bounds when he landed. Mike Stoops is continuing to lobby. <laughs> that official is going to have yeah. ringing in his ears for about three days before this game's over. Fourteenth play of the drive now for Oregon. And they had to have a long drive last week against Cal. They had an 18 play drive and 65 yards. And took over nine minutes off the clock and didn't have to score to preserve their last win, 15 to 13. Cal never got the ball back. Thomas keeps it, and he's got it. And I'll tell you, this shows something about the character and the toughness of the Oregon football team. You know, even when it doesn't happen as explosive, they still find a way to grind it out. That's what they're doing on this drive. This is a grinded out drive, but you know at any moment, if Arizona makes a mistake, if they miss a gap, if they miss a tackle, it could go right to the end zone. You see after that last play when he lost Thomas, his pouch you are around his waist, they just kicked it out of the way. They don't even want to take time to buckle that thing back up. Michael James, no, the Thomas keeps it, and Thomas has got a touchdown. Twenty yards. What could have been a stop, and getting the ball back becomes another touchdown for Oregon. That was a great fake, Darren. You had me on that one. <laughs> Extra point just inside the right upright. Well, he can do it with his arm, and he can definitely do it with his wheels. He sold the fake. Got to the end zone. 99-yard drive for a score. Well, the duck is getting a ride. He's still going to do his push-ups as Darren Thomas went in from 20 yards out to cap a 99-yard drive in 19 plays. Top ranked Oregon 27 to 19. Remember, they went for two point conversion earlier in the game, and also there's been a safety. That's why they've got kind of a wacky score right now on the board. At the 12 yard line is Turner. And he's run out roughly at the 26 yard line. So Simmons takes his spot at tight end. Nowoko in the backfield. Play action, deep ball on the sideline. It'll be a jump ball, and it's caught. By David Douglas. Well, Cliff Harris mistimed his jump. I mean, he jumped for the football and was in position to make a play, but he jumped too early. Watch the end of this play. Cliff Harris is going to jump too soon, and as he's coming down, the ball's falling right into the hands of the receiver, Douglas. Great concentration by Douglas to look over completely backwards. First down at the 24. Douglas, the guy that just caught the ball in motion. Try to get a running game going, and Casey Matthews is out. I don't think so. Good middle linebacker. Clock winding its way down near the three-minute mark. Well, this back judge back here, the furthest official, that's who's going to keep the clock. And that's who Nick Foles has to pay attention to. When there's 10 seconds left, he's going to hold his hand straight up. Five seconds left, he'll hold his arm out. They fake the pitch. Got to get rid of it. And he's hammered before he can. And it's Casey Matthews again. Boy, and he had a guy wide open, too. Timmy Tutugi was wide open because of the blitz. But Foles did not have time to get him the football. Watch number 31 get into the back of the defense. There's nobody there for him, and that's where Foles was trying to go with the football, but he couldn't get rid of it soon enough. And boy, Casey Matthews put his face mask right in Foles' kidneys on that tackle. Sure, Nick is still feeling it, but now he's got to pick up a third and ten, or try to. Here they come. Foles.
Bills. Lofts it long. Corner of the end zone. Broken up. Incomplete intended for Kreiner. Cliff Harris was there with him. And that time Harris did not miss time his jump. That time he was right on time with his jump. And he went up and he fought Kreiner for the football. Harris is 5'11". Kreiner is 6'4". But because he timed his jump properly, he was able to knock it away. You talk about an important field goal. Three's not what Arizona wanted, but they'll take it. A 41-yard attempt by Alex Zendejas. To try to keep Arizona right in the thick of things here late in the third quarter. Then Deos from 41, and it's right down Main Street. Big kick, big points. The Wildcats hanging with the top ranked team in the country. All right, Reese, thanks. Arizona kicking off after picking up the 41 yard field goal. Josh Huff from the six yard line. He's got. One of the big touchdowns tonight, an 85-yard run. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew at Odson Stadium in Eugene, Oregon, on a rainy, cool night where the number one team in the country has their hands full with number 21, Arizona. 2.39 remaining in the third. Let's see if Oregon continues their onslaught. I mentioned last time they had it, they took it at their own one-yard line after a great punt by Zendayas, but took it 99 yards for a score. Adam Hall again puts well, down LaMichael James. What Arizona has to do is they, they can't give up any more big plays. I mean, and that's easier said than done against this Oregon team, but they've got to make them earn everything. James again pops out into the second level. Brooks Reed stayed with him, but he picks up the first down. The more plays you make them run, the better chance of maybe you get something good to happen, a turnover or a negative play. With the first down at the 43-yard line, and now Darren Thomas on the way. He's already got one touchdown run tonight. He gets planted, but he picks up a big gainer down to the 32-yard line, 24 more yards by the Oregon quarterback. See, when you run the option, and if you're a defense, you have to have somebody assigned to the quarterback and somebody to the pitch. That time, Brooks Reed, number 42, was assigned to the quarterback, but he couldn't catch him. Well, first down at the Wildcat 33-yard line. Set everybody on the Oregon front. And now it's LaMichael James. Oh, got about a yard out of that one. There was a face mask at the end of the play after he was already out of bounds. And Hall might have gotten away with one there. Play had already been whistled dead because he was out right there. And then there's a little bit of love for LaMichael James. I think Adam Hall is the most popular guy here in our Olympic Stadium right now. Barner comes in and takes James out of the lineup for a breather. He'll get the carry. Barner broke a tackle, first down, a lot more. First and goal, Oregon. Nice to be able to bring in a guy like that when the leading rusher is going to take a break for a play. 25 yards for Barnett. Well, they both average over six yards a carry, and they both have the ability to break arm tackles. That time, Robert Golden missed the tackle, and Barner turns in another first down inside the 10-yard line. Barner will stay in there. It's first and goal for the Ducks. The Wildcats, six. Two tight ends set. And Matt Paulson, one of them on the move. Play action. Thomas wants to throw it back the other way. He's got a man. Touchdown, Davis. Drew Davis all the way across the field in the corner of the end zone for the score. This is a design throwback all the way, and Davis was the far receiver. That shows the arm strength of Darren Thomas. Extra point is up and good. Another long touchdown drive in a hurry. 75 yards in seven plays in just a little over two minutes. They've 
only given up one touchdown in the fourth quarter and that was with basically third string guys in the ball game. They've outscored the opponents 87 to 7 in the fourth quarter. So now Arizona is going to need a touchdown pretty quickly. I think just to have their confidence built up enough to think that they can hang with these guys. Travis Cobb at the 10. And he's running the wrong way. Thomas Jackson and Brian Jackson. Combined on the stop. They're getting better every week. Nick Foles, worst starting field position for his offense at the six yard line. Antolin on the ground, maybe to the nine. And that might do in the third quarter. Two years ago, Arizona trailed Oregon here in Eugene, 48 to 17 at one point. They rallied back and scored 28 unanswered points. They still lost 55 to 45. But they've got a chance if they can get something going here. Down 12. They hope the fourth quarter is theirs. As soon as we're done. One will be along next, 34-22, as we start the fourth quarter. Brad Nestler, Todd Blackledge, and Holly Rowe with you from Watson Stadium. Arizona's up against it now. And the Oregon defense knows it. Thomas Jackson, one of the captains of the defense. There's the numbers we were talking about. 87 to 7. They've outscored the opposition in the fourth quarter, and that was a meaningless game with a lot of guys that don't normally play that gave up that touchdown. The guys that are on the field right now are pretty stingy. Huge play right here now for the Arizona Wildcats. The momentum has really swung to the Ducks. Foles has played very well. Under pressure, pumps once, throws high, and almost picked off. Intended for Douglas, incomplete. Everything was going good for Nick in the first half and not so much in the second half. Not a good throw that time by Nick Foles. He had time. He didn't get his feet readjusted well enough to make the strong throw. And credit that Oregon defense. Again, you know, so much talk about their offense, but this is the top-ranked defense in the Pac-10, and in the second half, they have been brilliant all season. I don't like this look. Cryer in his own end zone and Cliff Harris licking his chops on the other end. As a punt returner. Well, he's definitely going to keep it out of Cliff Harris's hands, but the ball might not get to the 40 yard line. Well, the last time they used Zendejas, hard to pooch one 90 yards, though. <laughs> that was a 25 yard punt. Not good, but great field position for Oregon, and they can start to ice this thing away if they get another touchdown. Go for it here on fourth and ten. Talk about needing a big stop for Arizona. And they don't get it. Jeff Mayo carrying the mail down to the 13 yard line. Threw him a touchdown pass when they needed to score. Threw him a crossing pattern for 21 when they needed to pick up nine. Mr. Dependable. Well, fourth down, go to your most reliable receiver. You know he's going to catch it if it's anywhere near him, and then he gets the first down easily. Ducks are three for three on fourth down conversions tonight. Now they got a first down inside the 14-yard line. Actually right at the 13 of Arizona. For Michael James. James, five. James, touchdown. do it right there. Hard to keep them bottled up for a whole game, isn't it? 
They take pride in how well conditioned they are. They take pride in their fourth quarter performances, and they take pride in the fact that they'll wear you down with their tempo. Right now, the tempo's got them up 41 to 22. Time running out on Arizona's upset bid. Well, Michael James caps the 35 yard drive with a score. The duck was not that busy in the first half, but he's up to 143 push ups and what about 2,600 for the year, yeah. something like that? Yeah, he came in with 2,445, <laughs> so he's almost 2,600 yeah, here. Right in there. That's a well conditioned duck. I think my son Quinn could be the duck. He, he's a push up guy. He's a push up guy. Okay. 88. There it is. Turner from the one. Oh, the ball is out. I think Oregon's got it. They had the best shot at it, that's for sure. The umpire's on the bottom of the pile, too. Duck ball. Might be some more push-ups coming up here in a minute. Scott Grady, I think, with a fumble recovery. Now, Brian Jackson, number 12, a true freshman, is the guy running down there that gets the hit. Helmet right on the football. Perfect form tackle by Jackson. And the ball comes out. And this one is going south. At warp speed. At warp speed for the guys from Tucson. Don't drop the duck. He might have to do more push-ups here in a second. First and goal at the eight-yard line. They call their offense the blur offense. Boy, it's a blur right now. Sure is. Well, Michael James fighting for everything to the end zone, but he only got to the two-foot line. I thought he got in. They'll spot him there. Again, you're talking about a guy who is listed as 5'9", 185 pounds. So he's probably not quite 5'9", but look at the power running in between the tackles, carrying Arizona defenders towards the goal line. Down inside the one. Will he get another handle? Yes. Touchdown. The quack attack continues. Yeah, maybe they are the best team in the country. Mm. <laughs> you always like to see them in person to get your opinion. My opinion is getting very high about the Oregon team. Well, I'm sold on the tempo and what it does to an opponent over the course of time. Extra point is good. Only took two plays to go eight yards in 21 seconds. So they have another one of those quick scoring drives after the fumble recovery. Michael James from a yard out. 48-22 now at 12.15 to go. If you thought the Ducks were a little bit off track against Cal a couple of weeks ago and maybe for two quarters tonight, I'd say they're back on it. Yep. Yep. 304 rushing yards, three plays of 25 more from scrimmage and closing in on their season average, which is 51 points a game. And even better than that on their home field. Over 60 a game on their home field. Turner, who dropped the last one after the big hit, takes this one at the 10. Tries to put a stiff arm out there, and he just got a whole mouthful of the kick coverage of Lacombo. Foles crossing pattern. Completes it, and that is a big price to pay to Antolin for the short game that he got. Uh, we've seen Boise State a lot. You know, on TV this year, we yeah. hadn't seen Oregon in person until right now. We've seen Auburn and uh, how they played. Great comeback for Cam Newton oh, and Auburn. Outstanding. So number one and number two are still looking good. We'll see how number three does. Yeah, and, and it's hard to separate those three teams. You know, and, and you almost you got to throw TCU in that mix as well. Another undefeated team, and the common thread with all four of those teams: outstanding quarterback play. Right. I mean, Cam Newton, Kellen Moore, this guy Darren Thomas. 
Andy Dalton at Andy TCU. Dalton. You just got to wonder what as Arizona picks up the first down on the completion to Travis Cobb. Yeah. First down Arizona at the 44 yard line with 11 and a half to play. Foles, Spires, completes to David Douglas. Knocked out of bounds as we go to Holly. Well guys, we had turkey yesterday, but the Oregon football team in their team mail did not have turkey. Chip Kelly citing some studies that there is an amino acid in turkey called tryptophan that increases sleepiness said, no turkey for us, King Crab Legs instead. They needed to be sharp for their game today. <laughs> Well, they have been. Uh, they can have turkey tomorrow if they want. He said they can eat all the turkey yeah. the rest of the weekend they want, just not yesterday. I kind of like that trip to fan deal. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, I slept good last night. Kind of goes with it. <laughs> kind of goes with Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, my brother has a system. You eat the meal, and then you crash on the couch watching football. Then you wake up, and you start <laughs> eating leftovers yeah. immediately. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Another first down. Arizona not giving in completely, but time is of the essence right now for their offense. Foles waiting and now going deep and got a man. Touchdown. David Roberts. He waited and waited until finally somebody came open and he threw a perfect strike. 32 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, outstanding protection up front. At front five giving Foles all the time he needed to survey the field and come back to a secondary read for an easy touchdown. Only the second touchdown allowed by the Oregon defense in the fourth quarter all year. 81 yards in just a minute and a half. Snap high, but they got the hold down. And the extra point is good. 48-29. Not quite over. Still some time left. Let's see if we're going to see an onside kick. Oregon thinks so. And he'll kick it straight away. And it's going to go all the way to the end zone. Good kick. Barner was back there, but he has to watch it roll out the back of the end zone. Well, Foles with a touchdown pass. Let's take a look back at our coverage spotlight brought to you by Travelers Insurance. Todd? Well, there was no coverage because there was too much protection. Foles had a chance to really look all across the field and finally come back to his receiver Dave Roberts who was not the primary but got the touchdown because of great protection. I really like what I've seen of Nick Foles tonight. It might be in a losing effort but uh, he's played very well. And now the Ducks can ice things here with two and a half to go. Giving it off to Alston in the backfield. I would say in that Nevada game, very similar to what we had tonight, if you're the underdog, you can't help that other team at all. Yeah. I mean, you've got to win the turnover battle. You've got to win the penalty battle. You've got to, you've got to score when you're in the red zone, touchdowns and not just field goals. You've got to play a clean game, cleaner than that, that team that you're trying to beat or upset. And uh, the, the difference for... Nevada tonight as they're playing at home. So if things get rolling in their favor, the crowd becomes a, an asset. And remember, Arizona did just what Todd said you can't do penalties that kept drives alive for Oregon and gave them new life and drives that ended up being touchdown drives. And uh, those were killer penalties, and they'll look back on those and know that that could have made a difference. So Oregon's going to be the Pac 10 champions for the second year in a row, and that means a BCS. Bowl and will it be for the national championship? Well, that'll be determined if they can get through Corvallis and their arch rivals from Oregon State next week. Auburn's already held up their end, dug themselves a big hole at Bryant Denny Stadium, but Cam Newton and the Tigers fought through it and won it today. And then, of course, Boise State. We talked about playing tonight, TCU tomorrow. And all that, you'll know all about it with the BCS show at 8.15 with Reese and the guys on uh, Sunday night on ESPN. That was a little shake and bake by Remini Alston. And we're down under a minute. 23 seniors played their final game. Nate Costa was the last guy they introduced, came out on crutches. And that was a pretty cool scene, actually. As much as he'd like to be out there helping. Probably the loudest ovation, too. Yes, it was. It, it was, I thought it was really a, uh, a touching thing for him. I mean, he's battled 
several injuries, missed two whole seasons because of knee injuries. And uh, got hurt again this year versus Washington back on the 6th of November. The guy he battled for the starting quarterback job has blossomed in his sophomore season into quite a leader of his own right. I'm sure he's learned a lot from Nate along the way. That was one of the questions. You know, Nate Costa had a lot of longtime relationships with particularly some of the offensive linemen. He yeah. lives with the center, Jordan Holmes. And so there was questions. How would that how would that translate now with Darren Thomas, the quarterback? But Nate Costa, a well-loved player on this team and a leader on this team uh, handled things all the right way. That was before the game tonight. Nate, the last guy announced, coming through the gauntlet of his teammates and got a big smile on his face despite the fact that he's going to have to continue to rehab from his injury. I mentioned that game last year in Tucson when they scored with six seconds left on the Masoli pass. He had to hold the extra point on a bad snap, and he got it down good. Oh, no. Don't be at a touchdown on a fourth and two with the game over. It almost was. And that'll do it. Chip Kelly, back-to-back Pac-10 titles, wins this one 48 to 29. That's going to do it for us. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowan, our entire ESPN crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Eugene, Oregon. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore standing by with Nevada and Boise State. Guys.